Number 21. What is the mechanical advantage of a wheelbarrow, such as the one in figure 9.23, if the center of gravity of the wheelbarrow and its load has a perpendicular lever arm of 5.5 centimeters, while the hands have a perpendicular lever arm of 1.02 meters? All right, so here's our picture. Um, the fulcrum is actually right here at the wheel. Okay, and we now have a couple of uh, relative distances between the applied forces and the uh, fulcrum. So it tells us that the perpendicular lever arm of the center of gravity of the wheelbarrow is 5.5 centimeters, which is going to be this little distance right in here, okay, between the fulcrum and then the center of gravity uh, line of action. So it's this little distance right in here. And then it also tells us the perpendicular lever arm uh, from where the input force is being applied to the fulcrum here is going to be 1.02 meters. So that's this total distance. Okay, so in just thinking about solving for mechanical advantage, I have to use this formula over here on the right-hand side. Somehow that turned into a triangle. And I'm going to write it down. MA is equal to now the input lever arm over the output lever arm. So the input lever arm correlates with the input force. So the force that's being inputted is uh, the force that your hands are exerting, pulling this up. So that lever arm here, as they told us, was 1.02. 1.02 meters. I'm going to put in the units here for a reason. And then the output uh, lever arm is basically going to be then the distance between the uh, center of gravity line of action and the fulcrum right in here. And that's going to then be, uh, as they told us, 5.50 centimeters. Now we have a problem. Okay, these units are not consistent. So you got to do a conversion. Either convert this value to centimeters, then divide, or convert this value into meters and then divide. This is essentially a ratio. You have to be consistent as in all ratios with the units. So let's just convert the bottom uh, to meters. So that would just be 0 0.0550 meters. And now I can do my uh, division. So it's 1.02 divided by 0 0.055. So it comes out to about 18.5 um, and yeah, three sig fix. So 18.5. And it's unit less because it's meter divided by meter. So that's the mechanical advantage that takes care of part A. Why don't we take a look at now part B? It says what upward force now, what upward force, whoops, should you exert to support the wheelbarrow and its load if the com if their combined mass is 55 kilograms? So it's saying that the combined mass of whatever contents are in the wheelbarrow and the wheelbarrow itself, which has a center of gravity right here, um, if their contents have a mass of 55 kilograms. So basically what we're going to do again is we're going to use this formula. Okay, we're going to use uh, this half now uh, of it. So let's write that down. Mechanical advantage is, equal, going to, is going to be equal to the output force over the input force. Mechanical advantage we just found. All right, the output force is going to be the uh, force of like we just talked about, the wheelbarrow and its load. Uh, so therefore, they told us that its mass, right, is 55 kilograms. So I can expand on this if I wanted, right, to call it now the mass of the wheelbarrow multiplied by gravity. And then divided by now the input force. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, what force must we apply? So just solving for the input force, then it becomes this, the mass of the wheelbarrow times gravity over the mechanical advantage. All right, all I did was just switch those two, basically. And now we can plug in the numbers. So the mass of the wheelbarrow and its contents was 55 kilograms. Gravity's, as we should know by now, right, 9.8. And then we're going to divide that now by the uh, mechanical advantage, which was about 18.5. Okay, so the input force now should be 55 times 9.8 divided by that answer. So it's 29.1. 29.1. And that is in terms of Newtons. So that's the input force. Easy peasy. Last one, letter C. Uh, what force now, uh, where's the high letter? What force does the wheelbarrow exert on the ground? So basically it's asking us for, you know, what force is this wheelbarrow exerting on the uh, downward on the ground? So uh, that would be equal to, but opposite in direction, right, of the normal force that's then the ground is pushing up on this uh, wheelbarrow. So let's just think about the forces in the problem. Okay, there are three. The, uh, let me, yeah, this color should be fine. So we have the input force. 
and that's pointing up. We have the force of the, uh, or the weight, I should say, of the wheelbarrow and its contents, which is pointing down. And then we now are going to have a balancing force here that is pointing up in terms of the normal force, right? So that being the case, I have these values, all right? And remember, if I find the normal force, I can then just say that the normal force is gonna equal the force that the wheel exerts on the ground, okay? Due to Newton's third law. So now what I'm gonna do is let's create this. We know that the sum of the forces, since this is an equilibrium, is zero. There were three forces, like I said, the input force, which is pointing upward, minus then the weight, which was pointing downward, plus the normal force, which was pointing upward. Okay, that should all equal zero. And again, I'm solving for that normal force. Okay, so uh, thinking of just rearranging this, this would be the weight minus the input force. The weight is known as mg minus the input force. And now let's just start plugging in our values. So the mass of the wheelbarrow and its contents was 55 kilograms, right? Gravity is 9.8 minus then the input force, which we found uh, to be about 29.1. It's rounded slightly. And now we can find our normal force here. So 55 times 9.8 subtracted by that prior answer. So about 510, okay? 510 Newtons. Now that is the value, right? That the That's the normal force. That's the force that the ground is exerting on the wheel. But then, right, due to Newton's third law, since there are no accelerations here, um, that would also be equal to the force that the wheel exerts on the ground. All right, so that concludes that. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.